This month's video is a request from one of my newsletter readers who wanted to know how to deal with um, uncleared checks from prior years and, if necessary, how to reissue those checks. So we're going to walk through that process and uh, see everything that, that you need to do. And first of all, I'll say that it's going to depend a little bit on what type of check um, it was. You know, if it was a, um, a payroll check or a, a check that went straight to an expense account or a check that went to uh, to pay an invoice, it'll vary a little bit, especially if you need to reissue that check. So let's start by talking about payroll checks because that's the one that uh, Sage really makes the easiest because they've they've automated that process. And so you would start by going and finding that check and just opening it up here in the payroll entry window. And you'll see there is a reissue button. So if you click that button, at first it looks like it didn't really do anything, but what it's already done is it's voided the original paycheck and then we've got a new check here. You can see the check number is blank and it says reissue on it. And so you would just uh, put the date the date that you want to reprint that check. And so um, since you the since it voided the check, the the void creates a, a negative payroll check. It's an exact opposite of the original check. And then the reissued check should be exactly the same as the, as the original check. So since the void and the reissue are on the same date, there's zero effect on your general ledger and on your payroll tax reports. So you would just print this check and then you'd be done. Um, but unfortunately, there's no reissue button on, on any non-payroll check. So we basically have to recreate that same process. So let's close this and we won't save it. And so let's take a look at checks that um, well did not pay an invoice, um, or well, or if they did pay an invoice. The first part of it's going to be the same. I'm going to go to Tasks, and we can go to Void Checks, which is down here below where you can see. The other way you can get there is if you go to Banking, then you've got Void Checks right here. Now this window popped up really fast because I'm just in the sample company, but if you have a lot of history, especially if you have a lot of uncleared checks, or worse yet, if you don't use the bank reconciliation feature in Sage 50, it could take a while for this window to open. So you're just going to find the check that you want to avoid, and um, you can choose a void date up here. That would normally be you know today's date, whatever that is. Um, and you can also pick a different bank account up here if you need to. So I'm just going to pick a check at random here and void that check. Are you sure you want to void this transaction? We'll say yes. And you can see it disappears off the list. And what that just did is it created an exact opposite check, a negative check, um, that undid the effects of, of the original check. So um, if that was... Uh, if that check just went straight to an expense account, it's reduced our expenses as of the, the void date. If it paid an invoice, then the invoice is now unpaid. Um, so if you, if you did not want to reissue the check and that check did not pay an invoice, then you're done at this point. Um, if the check did not pay an invoice and you do need to reissue it, then you would just go back and create a new check just like you normally would whether you go through payments or write checks or pay bills however you want to do it and you know, you'd fill in your vendor and uh, and create the new check just like normal print that you know nothing out of the ordinary there and also if it was a check that did pay an invoice and you needed to to reissue it same thing you would just go and reissue that check you just come back in here to payments uh, fill in the vendor, find the invoice, check it to pay, and print your check. Nothing to it. Um, where it gets a little more messy is if this check paid an invoice and you're not going to reissue the check. Um, so possibly maybe you double entered an invoice and uh, found out after you'd already printed the check. Um, and the you know, and then assuming that the, the check did not clear, either wasn't sent or they sent it back. Now you've got to deal with that open invoice. So the easiest way to do that in most cases is to do a vendor credit memo. So you're going to go to tasks and then vendor credit memos. And you're going to choose the vendor. And you'll set the credit date, which again is normally going to be today's date. 
and the credit number if you have a credit memo from the vendor you would enter it there if you don't then usually what I do is I'll just put in CR followed by the original invoice number and then you'll come down here on the apply to invoices tab click to open that list and choose the invoice that um, that was unpaid when you void the check then you're going to come up to the top click return and then choose all and that's going to pull in all the dollars all the quantities everything from the original invoice and when you save this then it is going to reduce your current period expenses by the amount of this invoice but it's also going to apply this credit memo directly to this invoice number so that it gets cleared off of your off of your payables and you may be thinking that you don't want to change your expenses in the current period but you really need to because in whatever period whether it was last week last month last year that um, that we doubled up that invoice we doubled up our expenses um, so now we're correcting that we have to reduce our expenses by the same amount and let's say that it was an invoice that didn't go straight to an expense account uh, like this invoice right here let's say return all and you can see this invoice dealt with inventory items so now we're doing a vendor credit memo on inventory items we're putting these items back in inventory or I'm sorry we're taking them out of inventory the original purchase would have put them into inventory the credit memo was taking them out of inventory and in many cases that will be what you want but not always so let's say it was a duplicate invoice though that would have then put too many things into inventory so you would want the credit memo to back them out but let's say that that happened several months ago before we you know, got around to fixing it and in between we had already done a physical inventory well in that case our inventory would have already been corrected so when this pulls these quantities out of inventory then our inventory will be wrong so in that case then you would have to go back in and do inventory adjustments um, and manually put those units back into inventory at the same cost that you just just uh, took them out so you get kind of a chain reaction there um, you know the other thing to keep in mind too is that that really these procedures are the same procedures whether you are um, whether you're dealing with a check that didn't clear the bank in this year or last year or whenever because you want to keep all your check numbers accounted for if you're going back and deleting out checks um, just because it will let you delete from them from the current year you're not going to have as good of an audit trail as if you leave those in there and void them anytime you've got a missing check number that's going to be a red flag to anyone who's looking over your books they're going to wonder if you really have accounted for everything um, but so anyway um, that is how you deal with um, with checks that haven't cleared the bank and reissuing them hope that you find that helpful